So Halo Infinite multiplayer is here, bang on for Halo's 20th anniversary, and a whole month early, which is incredible because every other video game on the planet seems to be delayed right now. It also seems like pretty good timing for Microsoft with Battlefield 2042 and Call of Duty Vanguard not performing as well. Now, if you are here specifically for the Elite controller settings, I have good news. My Warzone video actually covers those exact settings already. They work for just about any first person shooter and I haven't tweaked them at all for Halo. The core settings were actually changing in game, which is exactly what we're gonna go and do right now. Now, before you go to the Xbox Accessories app to start tweaking this thing, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the settings in Halo Infinite. There are only a couple of key settings that we need to change and it's gonna make everything feel a whole lot more responsive. Let's take a look. All right, so when testing anything out, you wanna go ahead and jump into training mode. Training mode is accessible by going to Academy and then training mode from the main menu. All right, let's just jump into the settings menu now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave uh, everything there on default, especially if you're using the Elite controller. This is a preference thing again, so have a look at your button layouts and see if they work for you, but it looks like uh, Halo has gone for standard Call of Duty controls this time around. At least that's what I call them anyway. Uh, check all that other stuff out yourself, but the defaults are all pretty good for things like auto clamber and maintaining sprint. And let's get into the meat of it. So sensitivity and acceleration. Straight off the bat, acceleration is set to two. You wanna bump that all the way up to five. That's, that's crucial for, for the remainder of these settings. As always, look sensitivity, vertical and horizontal are a matter of personal preference. Um, you will want to tweak those based on uh, how comfortable you are with the movement speed. These are, this is something that you'll be changing after and this is something that you can, you can test in training mode. Um, I'm trying it on eight at the moment and that's only because I'm trying to train myself to compete with these uh, mouse and keyboard players. Now these are the big changes that we're looking at. Right now what we want to do on the movement for the thumbstick is change the center dead zone to zero. Uh, now this is important because it means that you're going to be far more responsive. What it does mean, however, is that your character may end up moving without you actually touching the thumbstick at all. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and tweak that setting until your character no longer moves when you've got your thumbs off the thumbsticks. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to two and we'll find that my character is still moving. And then we're going to go ahead and tweak it further to three and we'll find that they've stopped completely. Now, it's up to you what you wanna do from here. You can go ahead and leave it on three. Uh, this is for my controller, but I still prefer to leave it on zero. And the reason that I do that is because you're never really stationary in Halo. You're always moving around, and I find that the center dead zone doesn't muck you up that much. The, the interesting thing is that there is actually a dead zone setting that you don't have control over behind the scenes that exists in Halo anyway. Uh, I think that if you're not using an Elite controller, that you will probably be able to set this to zero and be completely okay. Uh, the Elite settings or the Elite controller uh, it seems to be a bit sensitive. Now for this setting, the max input threshold, um, it's a bit divisive. Some people say put it on zero, others say put it on 15. Uh, it says here that the lower value increases the variance in the acceleration curve, higher value reduces slow turn. Basically what this means is that if I push slightly forward on my movement stick or my left thumb stick, I'm going to move immediately and quicker. Uh, there is a setting that you can actually tweak in the Xbox Accessories app for this controller uh, to change it from default to instant. So you move even further than that. Um, I find that there's not really much point changing that, um, but, but it is there. Anyway. I set it to 15 because for my movement, I want to move as fast as possible. Now this does make you a little bit lungy. You move forward quite quickly, but this game is about always being on the move all the time. It, it, it is quite, uh, quite fast paced. So setting this to 15 is for me. You may find that zero works for you, but it's just either side. I, I don't muck around with it anywhere in the middle. So if you're somebody who wants to fully reach the guard before you move, then putting on, on a low setting is best. Or somebody who wants to move sooner then you wanna make sure that it's set to a higher value, which is why we have it set to 15. Uh, now, the axial dead zone is another one. So the lower value uh, feels more responsive, whereas the higher value reduces drift. If you want it to be a little bit more twitchy, um, setting it to zero is ideal. Things just feel smoother overall. Again, if you are stationary with a zero setting and your um, thumbsticks aren't perfectly aligned, you probably will find that you'll get a little bit of movement when you're not moving but again, you are always moving. 
If you have a high axial dead zone, you'll find that movement is more forgiving, meaning that if you're pressing slightly to the left, but intent on going straight, you will move straight. If it's set to a lower value, then you'll need to be far more precise with your movements, but I find overall you'll be more responsive. And if we head down to the look thumbstick or the right thumbstick in this case, this one here, and I will mention again, the same as uh, Call of Duty and Warzone, I actually have the long thumbstick on there as well. I just find it's a bit more responsive. Uh, we're basically zeroing out everything. So the center dead zone is at zero, the max input threshold here is at zero as well, and the axial dead zone is at zero. This gives you the most responsive feel. Um, if I jump out of these settings now, and I do some slight movements with my left thumbstick, you'll see that my character is uh, is moving by themselves without me actually touching it in various directions. Um, but that again is just because of the, the, the way that my thumbsticks are, your elite controller might be completely different, but I really feel like just setting it to zero for those dead zones is the way to go. So just to confirm, look acceleration at five, look sensitivity, adjust it based on your preference, go into that training mode, muck around with it, see what works for you. Moving down there to move thumbstick and the look thumbstick, we've got the center dead zone at zero, the max input threshold for the left thumbstick at 15, axial dead zone at zero. And then on our look thumbstick there, the right thumbstick, we've got center dead zone, max input threshold and axial dead zone all set to zero as well. Just a quick refresher on the paddles at the back here. I have the left side set to jump the right side set to crouch, and the one above set to changing my weapon. If you're somebody who likes to use all four paddles, then I would set this side over here, which is the left side, to reload your gun. But I'm more comfortable with the three paddles, and that's exactly the same way that I had it set in Call of Duty as well. So for all those Warzone players out there with all that muscle memory, nothing changes for you. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I find that these settings give you the most responsive movement, uh, it gives you that sort of Call of Duty feel. Uh, and uh, just, just play around with your sensitivity, see what works for you, uh, because you everyone's different. Uh, and I find that if you are mucking around with sensitivity, just go ahead and bump it up in increments. You only want to do it sort of one at a time. Um, don't make sort of drastic changes because it will mess up your uh, your muscle memory. And that's, that's something you want to avoid. Um, as I did mention in my Warzone video as well, you know, you can get very obsessive about these sorts of settings and I find that it's just best to play the game and enjoy the game uh, and, and don't, don't sort of, you know, don't go ahead and change it every single time that you lose a match or have a bad match because there's just so many other things. There's so many other things that can come into play. You've got, you know, bad ping or, you know, a bad server or you're just having a bad day. Um, and yeah, and jump into to these bot matches as well, because while the bots aren't going to move exactly like a real player, it just helps you get your aim on point a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if I find that there are any changes uh, to these settings, I'm just going to put them in the comments below. Uh, and please let me know what is going on with your settings. If you found something else works for you, uh, let's, let's have a chat about it. Uh, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.